stickers because I can't paint my own nails. Yay. <laughs> What are you talking about? I got these three dollar glitter sticker nail polish. You can't you can't paint your nails, no problem. Speaking of nails, I have a life lesson for all of you guys out there whose significant other may have blonde or silver hair. Don't massage their head with shampoo that's purple for like 30 minutes. I really appreciate it though. Because it turns your hands purple. We're we're going on 24 hours now with purple hands. Yeah. It does match the two crazy keto's colors though. Willy Wonka. Welcome to Keto on the Couch, episode 102. I'm Rachel. And I'm Joe. And we are Two, two Crazy, crazy Ketas. Ketas. And if you're new to our channel, welcome. Yes, welcome to the more than 1,000 new subscribers since the last Keto on the Couch. Do you remember when we used to say welcome to the 10? Praise God. This is awesome. <laughs> now here on Two Crazy Ketas, we do different things like recipe videos and we do product reviews and we talk about various keto topics. And then every Monday, we sit down on the couch for Keto on the Couch. We just kind of talk about what's going on in our lives for the week. You can find us in different social media platforms like Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter. And we have a website, which is twocrazyketos.com. And that's where you're going to find all of our different recipes. Now we do upload at least five new videos every single week. So make sure you subscribe to our channel. And don't forget to hit the little bell icon. And that way, every single time we upload a new video, you'll be alerted to it. Since we do have a thousand new subscribers, let's address the elephant in the room. Yes. We're not sitting on a couch. We're not. We're not. <laughs> and we haven't been for quite some time. Yeah. So we actually started this on a couch and then we did a Christmas series mm -hmm. and we were at the bench and we're like, we really like it. And then COVID hit and we went live and we're like, yeah, we're not just going back to the couch because we like the camera set up and everything else. So. But we're, we're thankful. For, Sometimes we're on a couch. Yeah. Well, we're thankful for every... Every step we've made, but we don't forget where we came from. Yeah, and I don't want to have to relearn a new, like, intro. Keto on the bench. <laughs> so, yeah, life lesson. Don't use purple shampoo as, like, a massage for your wife's head. Like, get regular shampoo. I appreciate shampoo. it, though. You, I really do. Do you? I do. It was yeah, very like, nice. because my nails are purple now. Like, underneath, like, it actually turned the nail itself purple. It's beautiful, though. But <laughs> you instantly got a manicure. So you're welcome for that. <laughs> well, I needed something because this has been a super stressful week. It has. It has. It has been very stressful. I mean, good things and bad things. I mean, we were live on Keto Connect. How fun was that? So I'll leave a link for that video up here, actually. If you didn't go see it, it was cool. We spent an hour talking to Matt from Keto Connect about Thanks, Matt. our journey, like how we like to do keto, raising our kids, yeah. different things like that. I thought we had a good time doing it. You guys all represented, the WAC family represented, so it was really awesome. But we've had a bunch of things going on personally as well that led to a lot of stress. And here's the thing, stress, both good and bad, can affect your weight loss journey. It and I have learned that this week. Well, I mean, it absolutely can. And here's the thing, we don't go through, like, our eating isn't in a tunnel, Right. You know, exclusive of what's going on outside. You mm -hmm. know, sometimes just a change in schedule, mm -hmm. a change in location. Maybe you're on vacation. Maybe you're going through a stressful time. I mean, this was stressful this week for a lot of people going through winter weather, weather storms. And we got a lot of people um, mentioning non-scale victories was... I didn't stress eat and right. I had plenty to stress about. And I do think that that's a tremendous victory. If we can stick to our eating plan and break the connection between food and emotion. Yeah. But the reason I was bringing it up is because if maybe you did have a stressful week because of the weather or something else and you got on the scale and you're not seeing what you want, don't panic. This reverts back to our little blender thing where we talk about you've got to be consistent. And believe me, the last couple days, I want to blame everything because here's the thing. I have eaten perfectly this week. I have hit my macros perfectly this week. I mean, we even went out to Texas Roadhouse on Thursday and I got my, my prime rib and I felt great. And guess what? I am up eight pounds in the last four days. Now, is there any possibility that I've gained eight pounds of fat? No. No. And how do I know it's not eight pounds of fat? Because every joint in my body hurts. 
Yeah. And it's all stress. Like, the you know, good stress, bad stress. We had, you know, lacrosse started up. All of a sudden, I'm super busy and I'm stressing about how are we going to get everything done. And we're going away on our last camping trip for probably a month or so. And, like, all of that is just keeping me up at night. And that causes some water weight and stuff. So don't freak out. But maybe if you are up a little a couple pounds, Maybe look and evaluate. Did is there anything I could have changed with my diet? Did I do everything right? And if the answer is yes, then start looking at maybe I'm not getting enough sleep. Am I stressed? What can I do to reduce that stress? Because it works. And, you know, I woke up this morning and started, you know, thinking about things and reading my books. And literally in the last four hours, I've dropped four pounds. Like that. That <laughs> sounds a, weird, but it's true. That's a huge indicator. And also, you know, if you have a partner in this. I am continuing to go down. So mm -hmm. we're doing the same exact thing. Right. But one of us is retaining, you know, water weight, even though we're both doing the same thing. So hopefully I can be an encouragement to you. Like, yeah, we're doing we're doing the same exact thing. Right. It's just that we need to we're, you know, dealing with stress a little bit differently. So let's handle the stress, keep going, and then also communicate with your partner how can I be a help to you? Like, yeah. how can I be, you know, I don't, I'm not going to get on the scale and be like, nanny, nanny, boo, boo. Like I'm having success and you're not. And I'm also not going to apologize for my success and That's be like, true. well, I don't even want to share with you that things are going really great and I feel stronger. You know, you just have an open communication and be like, hey, we're in this for the long haul. Mm -hmm. So this isn't like, well, if we don't get this thing settled by next week, and I'm not where, you know, my health goals and my weight goals and everything is perfect by next week. We're just giving up. No, keep blending, keep going, and let's continue to have that open dialogue about what's going on. Yeah. Now, speaking of open dialogue, uh, we have a lot of comments to get to this week. Yeah. I think we actually have double the comments that we normally do. That's exciting. So if you're new to our channel, Keto on the Couch really focuses on you guys, the subscribers. So we like to spend like the first five or 10 minutes just kind of talk about like what's bothering us, like stress this week. Mm -hmm. And then we're gonna get into reading comments from the Keto on the Couch from last week. So please leave comments down below so that we have something to talk about next week. And we'll answer your questions. We usually ask you something what's going on like, what do you do to control your stress? Let us know, know down below. Do you go for a walk? Do you read a book? Do you maybe sing? You know, what do you do to handle your stress? So let us know down below. I highly recommend singing. <laughs> uh, you don't want me to sing. Well, I mean, it's make a joyful noise. It okay. doesn't have to be like a perfect one. Yeah, but that joyful noise for me is going to make everybody else put earplugs in. Aww. So anyway, <laughs> so we like to do that. And then also we celebrate our subscribers wins and their losses and, you know, any kind of like positive thing that's going on. So head on over to our Facebook family group because we're going to pull comments from there too. But in the meantime, I do want to mention real quick, we're going to go to a commercial break. But if you do like Keto Chow, this week's Keto Chow flavor of the week pairs perfectly with that brand new Perfect Keto Collagen flavor mm -hmm. because the Perfect Keto Collagen was strawberry, which you feel like you have bits it's of strawberry so in there. We left the review for it. It's right over here. I'm telling you, it doesn't taste like fake strawberry. No. But this week's um, Keto Chow flavor of the week is banana. I love banana. I did not think that I would love it, and I didn't think it would make one of the best ice creams, but it's actually one of my favorite ice creams is mm -hmm. when we have banana. It, it's really good. Yeah. I wanted to bring something up before we even go to commercial about Keto Chow. You don't need Keto Chow, okay? We like it. It's great for on the go because we live such busy, busy lifestyles, but we don't use it every day. But somebody actually left a comment because we talked about it where it is – you know, is it expensive? And it breaks down to less than $4 a meal, which I personally did not think is expensive. You can't go out to a fast food restaurant for $4. Can you go buy 79 cent eggs and eat yes. that? Yes. Absolutely. Absolutely. You also have to look at time. How long does it take you to cook and clean your dishes and all that other stuff? And again, we don't say eat it for all your meals. No. But I did want to say... Keto Chow has their recipe or the recipe that you could currently make right now. Now they use a little bit different quality vitamins and stuff. Mm -hmm. They have it on their website. Like they are about like, hey, you want to make this on your own? Go, go ahead. Yeah. We're making it for you for convenience. No different than you wanting to go out to a fast food restaurant. Yeah. But you can actually make it yourself, which I think is kind of cool. It is very cool. And it just shows the integrity of the company that it's like, we're not hiding anything. You, you If you think you can do it 
for less money, go for it. Yeah, so I'll leave a link for the recipe to make your own keto chow, like with every vitamin. I'm gonna leave a link for that blog post down below. It's a lot to curate. He even tells you why he has the recipe there. So anyway, let's take a quick commercial break and then we'll come back with all our comments. How's that Monday going? Are you enjoying it? Is (laughs) it good? What are you typing in the comment section right now? I'm saying Monday, Monday. So if you are watching this on Monday morning at around 10 a.m. Eastern time, we put up Keto on the Couch every Monday at 10 a.m. Eastern time, and Rachel or myself or both of us are right now currently in the chat during what we call a premiere. So if you come every Monday at 10 a.m. Eastern time, you get to chat with us live while this premieres. Now, if you're watching it later on, Sorry you missed that part. but Still send us a comment. Still send us a comment. It's our way of being able to make Keto on the Couch live without it being live because people liked it when we did live, but some people didn't like it. So Best it's like a happy worlds. medium. Now, if you want to see us completely live and talk to us live, Thursday make nights. sure you join us on Thursday nights, 8.30 p.m. Eastern time where we live stream every Thursday. Also, uh, Patreons, keep your eye on your email because we're going to be doing a Zoom call or live stream for you guys this coming Saturday, more information in this week's Patreon posts. Yeah. So, okay. So right now we're going to address our Keto College Adjunct Professor of the Week. You we love tell us this. What that is? Yeah. Every week we spotlight somebody who's been particularly inspirational and drawn our attention to something awesome. Yep. Well, this week's is from Jennifer. Hey, Jennifer. And Jennifer put up this little meme. It says, today I will live through the next 24 hours and try not to tackle all of life's problems at once. Yes. Today I will improve myself, body, mind, and spirit. And today I will refuse to spend time worrying about what might happen if. Wow, I love she that. She said, I just love this. Just do the best you can today. Don't worry about tomorrow. Make good choices today. Drink your water. Move your body. Eat some healthy meats and vegetables. And today, you can do it. How awesome is that? So like, yeah. if I you should have st- seen that four days ago. I was going to say, but you step on the scale or if you put on something and you're like, this is not fitting yet the way that I want it to fit or I'm just not feeling great all over in my body. Don't lose heart. Just... Think to yourself, I'm going to do the right thing today. Right. And if I do that consecutively over and over and over again, I will have a good result. Yeah, like if if you fell off the wagon yesterday and had a bad meal or ate too many carbs. Today's a new day. Can you do anything about yesterday? No. Except for beat yourself up. Yeah, and I don't want you to do that. What is beating yourself up going to do? It's going to make you miserable and now worry about, it's going to ruin today and then it's going to ruin tomorrow. So if you had a bad time yesterday, yesterday's yesterday. We're going to focus on today and we're not even going to focus on tomorrow because tomorrow's not in our control yet. What's in our control is what is happening right now at this hour, at this minute, at this second. And that's what we have to focus on. That's good. Good Okay, so we also have our subscriber of the week, which is we like to spotlight somebody's success. Now, if you're new to our channel, please head on over to our Facebook family group and leave your story, put a picture up. Uh, Try not to make it super long because we can't read a super long one. We're old. But it could be anything. It could be... I've had success for the first time in five years. Yep. I didn't eat sugar today. That's a success. It's an absolute success. Also, if you have struggled with a very particular health um, problem, mm-hmm. share that too, because somebody is looking out and saying like, wow, I'm having this problem. Like maybe, you know, I remember when Nisha shared going through Hashimoto's, there was a lot of people who were like, oh my goodness, you mean keto can actually help with Hashimoto's? Yes, it can. But until someone's willing to share their experience, people don't even know that maybe this diet can help them. Yeah. For example, if you maybe don't have a gallbladder, we have several subscribers who are in our Facebook family group who are doing keto for a couple of years without a gallbladder. And if you just type a little thing and they're like, hey, I'm struggling, I don't have a gallbladder, how do I do this? They will respond. But if you don't put that out there, if you don't share the fact that you, for example, don't have a gallbladder, nobody else knows. And people right now are thinking like, I'm all alone. They don't know what it's like until you share your story. So please go do that. So this week's subscriber of the week is Leslie. Hey, Leslie. She says, thanks for the ad. I love your videos. I'm almost a year into my intermittent fasting keto lifestyle, and I'm down to a size 12, 14 from a size 24. 
I also have PCOS, insulin resistance, and lipedema. I know the scale is not the end all to be all, but I started at 308 pounds and I am almost in Wonderland. Wow, girl. Wow. Look at that. 200.2. Don't you get on that scale and be like that point. Like how many times do you get on the scale to get the point two to go away? Like, have you ever done that? And then it goes at the point five. I'm like, I'm done. I'm done. Like, no, no, no. It's going the wrong way. I think it was Katie that first said, I have to weigh three times before it's actually like a thing. So yeah, I'm definitely, I've gone on the scale like a million times in one day to see like, okay, is this for real? I mean, especially when I went out of the 200s into Wonderland, it was like, this can't be the truth. Like, okay. I've got to have this. Confession time. Have you ever had that 200.2 or 150.2 mm-hmm. and gone and tried to squeeze a little bit of pee out to get it underneath? Oh, man. Oh, come on. Be on. Have you ever done that? Wow. I, I can't be the only one who's like, what can I do to get 0.2 off? Well, I'll tell I you, can't be the only one who's done that. Well, I'll tell you what I have done. What? Strip down naked to way. I'm already done doing that because and that's not a good sign my socks and underwear have got to be at least a half a pound right oh speaking of that you ever get on the scale and you're fully clothed and you're like let's see okay the scale says 195 it's got to be at least five pounds in clothing right Recently, so now i weigh 190 i wear very heavy shirts <laughs> Let's get into last week's comments. So the first one is from Erica. Hey, Erica. Said, hey, Joe and Rachel, I am a new subscriber, and I love Rachel. She reminds me of Kimmy Gibbler from Full House. Ha! So much fun. How interesting is that? Actually, Anthony and his girlfriend, Sarah, have been going through, like, watching all of the old Full House episodes and now, like, watching Fuller House. So... That's kind of awesome. She's in our house a lot, right? Like, that is so cool. Thank you. What a compliment. Well, we have another one, and it's from Bill. Hey, Bill. Bill said, you know, I figured out who she reminds me of. That 70s show mom. Oh, my gosh. She is so cute. I love her. Where did I recently see her? I think she was on WandaVision, actually, the mom from that 70s show. I love her, too, except for, like, I don't know if I quite have her voice. I mean, she has, like, a really cute voice. You have a really good voice. Thank you. I love her voice. Okay, next one is from Audrey. Hey, Audrey. She goes, Rachel, how tall are you? I am five, seven and a half. And I'm very protective of that half. You really are. I am. When's the last time we measured? What if what I if the it. half has gone away Shh. or gone up? Shh. It could be up. Maybe you're 5'8 oh. now. Okay, yeah, maybe I'm taller. I'll take that. I always wanted the to be... The ponytails definitely like give you a few inches. I'm always trying to get more without high heels. <laughs> okay, next one is from Lori. Hey, Lori. Lori said, Otoban is awesome. We buy it by the gallon at Sam's Club. So, yes. yeah, we found that Otoban. It's a funny story about the Otoban. The only reason we picked it up is it we had gone to there. Walmart and there were no cleaners on the Nothing. shelf. It was the only thing. I said, look at this stuff. So I picked it up. Now, we had several comments from people about the Otoban from that video, which was just a what I ate in a day video. I'll leave yeah. a link over there. And... Um, they said there's a lot of different smells that you can go to Home Depot. They have a bunch of different smells. I'm going to check it out because we've been blown away by it. And it does have a very nice smell. Although I honestly expected it to have no smell because of the way it was saying like auto odor ban, like no odor. But I guess it's no bad odor. Yeah. Now it's funny. She said that you can get it at Sam's Club, which we found it at Sam's Club. And I almost killed Caleb yesterday. Uh Uh-oh, what happened? Because I didn't realize that gallon was a concentrate, and that one gallon makes 64 gallons. Oh. So I filled up the container all the way with it, and then... He almost passed out trying to use it? I came in, Caleb was cleaning the kitchen, and he was like... (coughs) <coughs> oh man and then i realized man that stuff is awfully strong so i poured it like all back into the container and you need like that much and then fill it up the rest of the way we we'll watch Sorry. hey that means we're saving a lot of money but yeah, yeah did not Poor know baby. that that was a concentrate oh man he was like i cleaned the fool out of this thing <laughs> Next one is from Christine. Hey, Christine. She says, just wanted to say, though, I think you're awesome, Joe. Rachel, I'm such a fan. I would watch you read the phone book. (laughs) You're so unbelievably effervescent and fun, and I'm so happy you're confident enough that you don't give any credence to what those idiots say. (laughs) Don't change. Christine, thank you so much. What an encouragement. Um, I was talking to Joe this week because, you know, we did have a conversation. We've gotten a, a lot of things where people, you know, get upset if I'm I'm too excited. Mm-hmm. But here's the thing, and I want to share that with anybody who's maybe more excited. 
I want to clear this up. Okay. She gets a couple of them. Most of them come towards me. I'm just very protective of her. Yeah, which I appreciate. <laughs> but here's the thing. I I don't think that people who are criticizing realize what like what I had to go through to receive the joy that I have. There was such dark days. There was mm-hmm. so much hurt. There's so much anxiety. There was so much pain that now that I don't feel that, that 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 anxiety has lifted, that the depression is has lifted, that I don't have to struggle every single day with hurt joints and pain. It's like I can't help but let it flow. Like I I am joyful, but it has cost me. This this joy is is worth it. And so it's like I I don't think that they understand how hurt I was before. Like yeah. if you wanted to see somebody sad and not joyful, like I'm sorry, but you should have seen me 10 years ago. Well, you can actually go back to like our very first video, which I've been thinking, let us know down in the comment section, would you guys be interested in us doing a video of us watching our first video and <laughs> critiquing ourselves. Ooh, it's gonna be all orange and cringy. Because I mentioned it the other day on our live stream, which again is on Thursdays at 8.30 p.m. Eastern time. Um, if you would have seen us three years ago, or it, like, we're not the same people you saw now. We were head down, don't talk to us, we don't know anybody. Rachel literally had such bad anxiety that she would have to go to the restroom and like be literally vomiting from anxiety for like an hour before filming any video we did. Yeah. It's it's very different. And some of it just comes from the diet itself and the way your hormones change. And some of it just comes from you have a better attitude about yourself because you feel healthier. So it's yeah. very different. Yeah. And we really feel very passionate about helping people emerge from their own sadness and from Mm -hmm. their own hardships and to, and to enjoy their life. You know, God gave us this life and we want to enjoy it to the fullest. And we want other people to know that it's okay to enjoy it to the fullest too. Yep. So the next one is from Jessica. Hey Jessica. She says, I can't believe people take up so much time to send nasty emails and comments. If it resonates, take it and leave what doesn't. But it also makes me think, what are those people going through that they feel the need to inflict their self-hate onto others? It's too bad, but sending them some love. Yeah, because hurt people hurt Hurt people. people. So, I mean, I'm really praying that we can be a blessing to them and also let them let down their guard. Because, you know, it's kind of like that last stand of like, you know, I, I don't trust anybody and I kind of put up a wall because I'm afraid of getting hurt. And I'm hoping that you know, we can reach them because, you know, her people need a hug too. That's right. Okay, next one is from Brianna. Hey, Brianna. She says, Rachel, don't you dare change that smile. (laughs) Thank you, Brianna. You're so awesome. (laughs) Okay, next one is from Rose. Hey, Rose. She says, what causes the hair loss and how do you stop it? Okay, so um, there's a lot of different opinions on this, but I think most people will agree that a lot of it is protein. Mm -hmm. Uh, Most of us do under eat protein, which is one of the reasons we've started increasing our protein. And we talk more about eating that one-to-one protein to energy ratio. Yeah. Um, But it also comes down to just the amount of nutrition you're getting. You know, any diet you start generally you know, what you can go on Weight Watchers, whenever you change things and start calorie restricting, Yeah. most people will start losing hair. I mean, I've known people who have had gastric bypass surgery or gotten lap bands or just started like working out more without increasing their calories and they'll lose their hair because you're not getting the proper nutrition. Protein is a big portion of it, but if you start following that one-to-one protein to energy ratio, that will really help you know, your hair growth, because number one, you're going to be getting more protein and you'll be getting enough energy and nutrition and all your vitamins because you need the fat. A lot of people are like, well, does that mean I can stop eating fat? No, you need to eat like 60 to 80 grams of fat minimum a day so that your body can handle all of the nutrients and stuff. There are certain vitamins that are fat soluble and without taking in fat, not using the fat on your body, you're not gonna be able to utilize them. So all of that together is gonna help your hair loss. Yeah. Next one is from Bansley's. Hey Bansley's, it says your one-to-one has been working for me. I have been stalled on the scale for months, found you about 10 days ago and am down over four pounds already. Love you too. I am so excited. 
that really makes me feel super happy that like we've helped you move past a stall. Yeah, I know a lot of people have been talking about the one-to-one -one lately. We see it in the comments and section. And so I'm working on a couple things to kind of make things clearer. But if you haven't seen that, go check out our video, which is step three on how to do keto, where we talk about how to figure out your macros. I'll leave a link for that over Rachel's head. Um, but again, this is nothing new. Dr. Barry talks about all the time, counting calories is stupid. Eat till you're full one or two times a day. All this is doing is you're still not looking at calories at all. You're looking at the grams of protein. That's the primary thing you're looking at. Grams of protein. You want to make sure you get enough. And what it's going to teach you is what full feels like. Yes. Like I was on Autumn's live stream the other day and I was talking to her, you know, she was like, I'm trying to figure things out. And I said, for example, Rachel can and has, and has. eaten a three to four pound steak. And been like, I'm still hungry. Do I get a gold star for that? Like, how are you still hungry, Rachel? It's a thing though. But now knowing that like, okay, my gram ratio for protein goal is 120 grams. That's the minimum I should eat, which works out to actually be a 20 ounce piece of prime rib. Yeah. You're full at the end of that. But before, because you were always like, I'm, whatever's on my plate, I'm going to eat. But if you put on your plate what your goal is and you start, oh, that filled me up too, right? So it's a way of just learning because we've overdone it and ruined our satiety hormones. And is everybody like me? No. There are some people that can absolutely intuitively eat, but my intuitiveness is broken. That that little gadge, so you're gadget it. is broken. So mm -hmm. I am reteaching it, yes. Yeah, but you won't have to count your grams forever. forever. This is a way of just kind of retraining your body, but don't look at the calories just make sure you want to make sure you get all of those proteins in but i do want to say people talk about well does that mean i have to eat leaner no one of the reasons dr barry talks about ribeyes ribeyes are perfect one-to-one -one ratio they are perfect. It's, it's a perfect steak when it comes to the one-to-one -one protein to energy ratio so are eggs they're one-to-one -one. that's what makes them such a great food they're the perfect food i love it okay next one is from holly hey holly she says i'm getting full before i can consume all the protein i need i don't necessarily limit myself to a certain window per se like yesterday i had planned to eat additional hard-boiled eggs but after eating the chicken chili keto chow recipe i was too full and removed the hard-boiled eggs and ended up under my protein so you may have to take a little time to increase if you were way under eating protein because you may have worked with your stomach a little bit, maybe eat a couple more times. Also, try increasing, uh, rather decreasing the fat content. So for example, maybe instead of eating only chicken thighs, use chicken breast. So you can use leaner cuts of meat. You can, uh, instead of using 80-20, use 85-15 ground beef. There's not a huge difference in flavor, but there is a big difference in the fat content. You can also flip the order. Mm -hmm. Start with the eggs and end with the chili. Yes, yeah. So that's something you did with your mom, right? Like, yeah. So try to get all of your protein in and then eat other stuff. You right. Know? So just little hacks you can do, but look at things that are very high in protein, like Bison, you like if you, if you want to eat some ground meat, mm -hmm. use bison. Then add a little bit of fat because bison is very very lean. Or deer meat. There's actually a couple more comments about that later on, but they're a surprise for you, so I'm gonna wait for that. Okay. A, a trick towards the end. So make sure you watch this all the way to the end because somebody at the end actually has a really good comment how to get really high protein with very low fat. Okay. Okay. Uh, next one is from Bene Beneva. Hey, um, Beneva. I hope I'm not butchering that. You probably are. Said, um, I found your channel a few days ago and I subscribed today. Thank, Thank you, you for all you do. I started two years ago at 214. Today I'm 187. Yes. I need to stay motivated. The keto chow looks so good, but a bit pricey for me as a single lady. Any recommendations as a replacement? Um, honestly, there's no replacement for keto chow if you want to do meal replacement shakes. Yeah. But like we said earlier, you, you don't, don't need to. to. It's more for convenience for somebody who is on the go a lot. Like Chris actually created it because he's lazy and didn't want to take the time to have to cook all the time. That's what he says. But if you are on Instagram or Facebook, uh, we post new recipes every single day. So sometimes your motivation for keeping going is just trying something new. And there's lots of recipes on our Two Crazy Ketos website, twocrazyketos.com. Yeah, but if you're looking for a replacement for keto chat, like a meal replacement shake, <clears throat> there really is no replacement because it's giving you all of the vitamins and the electrolytes. I've tried some other brands that don't even have all of that. 
Number one, they don't taste as good. Number two, they're more expensive and they don't use as good of quality ingredients. And if I found one, I would absolutely be telling you about it. Yeah. I don't want to bash brands, but I will tell you if I find something better, which we've done with a lot of other products. Yeah. But we do have a video on is keto chow expensive because it does seem expensive when you look at that bag that's $70 but it really breaks down to less than $4 a meal. And if you think about it, like there's not many things you can eat for $4 a meal other than maybe bacon and eggs. There's yeah. not a lot, but go check out that video. Um, I think we have another link. I'll leave it linked up here where we kind of compare everything. We're going out to eat and also eating at home. What's the cheaper way and all of that. And so you might be interested in seeing that. Uh, next one is from RV There Yet. RV There Yet. I'm a Yujo organizationally. Plus, I'm married to and live with another one of us. I do hear about married people who are one of each. Hmm. Who are they? I mean, really. Also, a rule in our house that's only right and fair. If you cook, someone else absolutely does the cleanup. Yes. Seriously. So we're so thankful for what you do as well. Great life. God is truly good. That is absolutely true. Like, is that the rule in your house? Let us know down below. Like, my feeling is if I cook, shouldn't have to clean. What do you think? I mean, I think it's fair to share the chores. Absolutely. But I think that you sometimes need to mix it up. Sometimes people take the chore, you know, like I'm going to make the chore where I am never cleaning the bathroom. And like maybe that I'm never is, cleaning the bathroom. Right? Like, and so, and that might need not be fair. So you need to check in with your partner and make sure that everybody's happy with the chores that they have. Now, I I did tell you I'll learn how to clean the inside of the RV because if you haven't seen it, we have a video over on our other channel, Two Crazy Campers. Because I did do the outside. Where Rachel learned how to like empty the poop tank. Yeah. I think you should start doing it on a regular basis. I think that every now and then, if you do somebody else's chore, you get new appreciation for them. Let's take a quick commercial break and then we'll come back with the rest of our comments. Your butt looks so cute in your jeans today. Can I just tell you that? Awesome. What is wrong with you? Lots of stuff. Okay, next one is from Steve. Hey, Steve. He says, why broccoli on a plate versus bowls? Is it a volume thing? Do they load on toppings like it's an ice cream sundae? <laughs> I like the bowls because it's easy to cut and I'm left with a creamy shot of butter at the end. But now I'm wondering if I've been doing it all wrong this whole time. Okay, so this is in reference to when we go to Texas Roadhouse, we get a double side of broccoli. We tell them we want two sides of broccoli because you get two sides with your steak. Right. And we want it loaded. Put like the... You know, sour cream, bacon, butter, everything that you would put on top of a baked potato, but on top of broccoli. And we always say we want it on a plate. Yeah. The reason I want it on a plate is, number one, I like it spread out more. I feel like I'm getting more food. Uh -huh. it's, it's a visual thing. But more importantly, when, they, when you put the broccoli in a bowl, and what they're going to do is they're going to put cheese on there, and they're going to put it in the warmer to melt the cheese. Yeah. Because the broccoli is all piled on top of each other, it steams a little bit further and gets mushy. Yeah, it does. If you put it on a plate, it's spread out more and it doesn't steam as much. And in my experience, when they put it on a plate, the broccoli is crunchier, which is how I like it. The best is when they go that extra, extra mile and they put it on two different plates saying you got two sides. Now you feel like you're getting a lot of food. Now you feel like you're getting a lot of food. And like you said, it's cooked perfectly yeah. because it's they're not crowded yeah so let us know down in the comment section how do you like your broccoli or do you like i know he's gonna be like we don't eat broccoli like, what's we broccoli eat, we, yeah but let us know down below like how do you like your vegetables do you like them crispy do you like them like i like them like al dente not raw but not mushy i don't like that mushy stuff at all yeah Okay, so we have some comments from our Facebook group. Uh, first one is from Diane. Hey, Diane. She says, so if protein calories don't count, does that mean I can eat that many extra calories a day? Okay, we're not looking at calories. We don't look at calories at all. And I know this is a hard thing. It's a hard thing for me. It's, it's a hard it's, thing for Rachel. It's new. Don't look at calories. But if you go look at Dr. Naaman's book, Okay, and he talks about calories and there's a great interview with him and Keto Savage, which by the way, that I've talked about it before. I'm going to leave a link for it down in the description. It's a podcast. It's an, an audio only podcast. It's not video. So it's a little bit harder to find it, and you have to search for it under Keto Savage, not Robert Sykes. But they talk about that because Robert is all about the calories and all about fat. And Dr. Naaman's talking about it the other way. And he asked Dr. Naaman, like, what is your thought on calories? He's like, I think calories matter to a point. He's like, if you 
told me that protein calories don't count and we're only looking at fat and carbohydrates, I'm completely on board with looking at calories. But protein calories don't count because your body doesn't utilize the calorie the same way. Right. But if you overeat your fat, if you overeat your carbs, it matters, okay? That's why looking at the one-to-one ratio makes it easy for you because you go, okay, I can have up to 150 grams of fat. If I go over that, I'm gonna start gaining weight unless you're like ridiculously like exercising and stuff like that. Right. But keeping it at that 150 or lower for me, depending on what your goals are, will help me to continue to lose body fat and not have to worry about that. Now, if you do look it up, by the way, for the people who are into calories, Mm -hmm. for example, I'm eating 150, 150. That works out to be about 2,000 calories, which is what a lot of the macro calculators would tell me to eat at. So it actually works out, but the only calories we really care about are the fat ones. But it doesn't mean go eat a lot more. What it means is you could eat more only protein so long, but it's hard to get almost all protein with zero fat. Yeah. Except for the comment that you're going to have at the very end. Ooh, I'm so excited. Yeah. Make sure, by the way, you are subscribed to our channel and make sure you're hitting that bell button. And if you haven't done it, you, this is really important. And let's face it, this takes one second. Okay. Go hit the like button right now. Please. And thank you. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Next one is from Sojourn. Hey, Sojourn. Um, they say, so I've listened to YouTube videos today about ketones. I want to start reading my blood. Do any of you prick your finger? Are there any spring-loaded needles? It is much better if we can push a button and then the needle goes into the this, this skin very quickly. Okay, so there's only two ketone meters that we're going to recommend to test blood. And that is Keto Mojo and Keto Coach. There are other ones out there. In my personal opinion, I don't think they're very good. I've tried several of them. A couple of companies have even sent them to us. And I won't even, I, I'm not big into bashing small companies. No. Just so you guys know that. If there's something from Kellogg's, I'll bash it. Right. But we kind of don't like to, you know, bash so small we'll companies. We may give them advice on how to make right. things improved. We'll but just say nothing. Yeah. So we've tried some other ones. They're generally not very good. Those two companies are very good. They've worked really hard. They listen to the community to make their things better. Both of them come with a pricker that is spring-loaded where you really don't feel it, and they're both great. With that being said, you don't need to test your blood ketones. Now, if you want to, there's a link for both meters down below. And at this point, they're both about the same Mm -hmm. um, because they've both kind of done what like I like. They individually wrapped. Um, Keto Coach is slightly cheaper on refills. Keto Mojo also does blood, uh, does your glucose. So it's whatever you want. What you're looking but for. But you don't need to test for ketones. No, so don't feel like you need to buy that in order for you to continue moving forward in your keto lifestyle. Yeah, because if you, if you do the right thing, you're going to be in ketosis. And yeah. sometimes the problem with testing for blood ketones a lot is it makes, it's like the scale. It makes you chase a number and then wonder what you're doing wrong. Right. You know, like I remember when I first got started on keto and I was using the sticks because there was, you didn't even have keto coach yet. Right? No. There, there was no keto mojo, no keto coach. The only blood keto meter was like $150 and the tests were $350 a piece. Yes. So you relied on the sticks. So when you first start on keto, the pea sticks, everything turns dark purple and you're like, yes. And that's good because it makes you think it's working or makes you realize like, okay, I'm doing the right thing. After two weeks, even if you're perfect, those ketone strips go almost white. Yes, and then that's very disheartening. You're like, what am I doing wrong? And it's just because now you're utilizing the ketones they are not spilling over in your urine. It's the same thing with the blood. When you, the blood is measuring excess ketones that your body's not using, but the longer you do this, the more efficient your body gets and your body is even capable of literally taking the fat and burning it straight. So for example, yeah. me, my ketones are generally between a 0.3 and a 0.6. Rachel is usually like 0.7 to 1. Yeah. It just depends. But you can go look at Goody Beats or Danny Vega or any of them, and they're, they'll they put up numbers all the time. They're a 0. 0.5, 0. 0.6. You're still in ketosis. But yeah. if you start chasing the number, you may start going like, oh, what am I doing wrong? If you're doing the right thing, don't worry about it. Dr. Barry never tests. You're fine. Yeah, well, and you may also find that I mean, my numbers go up if I'm fasting. Mm -hmm. Well, I can't live never eating again, Mm -hmm. you know? So if I'm chasing numbers, it's going to be like, okay, well, just this many days without food. Like, you don't want to do that. That's not a good policy. Yeah. 
Okay, next one is from Jerry. Hey Jerry, they say finally got my blood work back. After three months of really focusing in and watching my carbs, my A1C came back at 6.2. This awesome. is so much better than 8.8 .8 in November. I still have a long ways to go weight wise, but I'm pretty thrilled following a somewhat keto lifestyle. We're just starting with keto chow and now I can more thoroughly go all in on keto. Full disclosure, I'm not making any <laughs> medical statements with regards to keto and diabetes. This is just a snapshot of what's been happening in my life and your mileage may vary. That's awesome. I'm so excited for you, Congratulations. That reminds me so we can make our regular statement. We are not doctors or nurses or any kind of health professional. Anything we talk about or suggestion we give are based on our own personal experience and things that we've learned and tested on ourselves. But if, especially if you have something like diabetes, make sure you're consulting with your physician. You know, a lot of people have had success, but everybody is different. Absolutely. Okay, so next one is from Nicolette. Hey, Nicolette. So I had been under the impression that fat was number one and limit protein and severely limit carbs. I now understand that fat is for satiety and protein is a goal. In doing the protein goal is my goal weight of 140. I am tracking my meals and finding that I am only getting about half of my goal. I see people talk about collagen or protein supplements. What is the best one that isn't a small fortune that I can get to co add to coffee or protein shakes for snacks or whatever I need to do to get the number up? I love all the suggestions and I love this group. Thank you. Okay, so first of all, you really need to look at the food. Try to keep it with food. Uh, as far as collagen, collagen is not a complete protein. Right. Neither are pork rinds. So I almost wouldn't look at that to get yourself, if you're only at half, don't eat a bunch of collagen to get your protein up because it's not a complete protein. Use a little bit leaner cuts of meat, but this is not just the keto thing. This is most of the country. I mean, I, one of the things in that podcast between Dr. Naaman and Danny, and uh, not Danny, and Keto Savage, they're talking about is the average adult man in this country eats less than 99 grams of protein, which is not enough. It's not enough. So even people not on keto, most people don't eat enough protein. They focus on the carbohydrates because it gives you that feel good high and it's just very weird. So it's it's a... We have to learn to eat more protein. You can eat slightly leaner meats. Um, for example, you can make our yogurt, our, which I will leave a link down below if, there, if there's so not good. one up here. But instead of using the full fat milk from Fair Life or Ultra, you can also use their 2% milk because that, again, those milks are lower in sugar because they're already getting a lot of the sugar out and that will make it a little bit lower fat. You can make our yogurt without adding the heavy cream. So those are great ways to get a bunch more protein. But except like using things like bison, using some chicken breast, you know, try eating tuna fish, fish salmon, shrimp, right? Especially if you go after like salmon that was caught in the wild. A lot of the salmons that are caught in the wild are leaner. The ones that are actually high in fat are the farm raised. I mean, we want to stay away from the farm rate. So go for like Pacific salmon. That's going to be very high in protein. And delicious. And delicious. Okay, next one is from Tracy. Hey, Tracy. They say, so discouraged and disappointed. I have done keto before and kind of fell off for a while. I use Carb Manager and do OMAD. I calculated my macros and followed them. I never eat more than 10 grams of carbs a day. Typically, it's three or four. I started three weeks ago and weighed myself this morning. Three pounds lost. That's it. I don't get it. Only eating once a day and sticking to my macros, no snacking or nothing. Ugh, anyone have some tips? Okay, I actually addressed Tracy in the comment section of Facebook, but I think a lot of people go through this, so that's why I put it in here. Um, three pounds is good. It's very good. I, I don't know. Somehow we've gotten it in our head that, like, if I don't lose 10 pounds in a week, like, it's not working. I think it is biggest loser syndrome. Mm -hmm. I think we've seen a lot of reality shows and also, you know, weight loss testimonials on advertising that is basically making us think that, you know, 7, 10, 15 pounds a week of weight loss is, is something that we should be hopeful for. And yeah. really, it's not only is it not something that really happens, but you're not gonna be able to maintain it. It's not something that you're gonna be able to sustain. Right. I mean, you think about even when you would watch The Biggest Loser and we would be watching and be like, 12 pounds this week, they are working at it more than a full-time job. Yeah, plus almost all of them put it back on. Yeah. Now. Do some people lose that kind of weight? Yes. My first go around with keto or when I first started, I did lose like 25 pounds in the first month. You also have to look at pre-keto, I was eating over 10,000, 
calories. So like, of course, and I was eating lots of fast food and junk. So of yeah. course, like I could have sneezed and lost 10 pounds in right. a week, right? So when you first started, it, it, you have to look at what was your eating before? Like I never drank a glass of water before. I was only drinking diet soda. I was like eating ridiculous amounts of fast food and, and things that were super high in salt. So I had giant water weight losses at the beginning, but yeah. then it leveled out. So you really, but a pound a week is really good really and, and good. really focus on that. But you also have to look at your, you might be dropping size. But the one other thing I wanted to address before we move to the next comment is please don't use carb manager, chronometer, or any of these apps to determine your macros. They're not right. If you absolutely want to use a calculator to figure out your macros, but again, the problem is they're all gonna look at calories and we're not looking at calories. Go to Maria Emmerich's or go to Keto Savages, which I will leave a link for both of those down below. We are also working on a calculator that hopefully will be on the website by the time you're watching this video, fingers crossed. If so, I will leave a link for it down below. But that calculator is gonna really be talking about the one-to-one -one where you're gonna put in like four numbers and it's gonna give you where you should be uh, it may not be pretty when I get it up there by Monday, <laughs> but it will be there. Functional. Okay, so next one is from Christopher. Hey, Christopher says, my non-scale victory today, having a blast at 40 after spending most of my 20s and 30s morbidly obese and in pain. It's the little thing. So Christopher had a video of himself doing snow tubing with his kids. How and awesome I was trying to figure out how to pull the video off, but I couldn't get it off of our Facebook group. But it was awesome. It just reminded me of, us going to the theme park with the boys at Christmas yep. time and even last year. Super different. And thinking about how different it was from when we went when they were little kids where we couldn't even get on some of the rides with them. No, and now they're adults and you can go on the ride without worrying about crushing them. I can remember how many times I would actually hurt my hands and arm because I was trying to brace myself if I managed to sit in the seat next to them because I was so worried that like, it would move and I would crush my yeah. child. Like I was so afraid of that. Now we can fit together and they're an adult. Yeah. Uh, next one is from Margie. Hey Margie. Margie wrote, there are two different versions of keto cookies at Aldi. Be sure to read the label. Yes. So I put this because here's the picture. And I did want to say thank you, Margie, because we did do that review of the Aldi cookies, which were really good ingredients. So good. Um, and now people are saying there's another one. So it goes back to make sure you are looking at the ingredients and, and checking because the other one evidently has sugar and stuff in it. So make sure you look at the ingredients, even if it says the word keto on the bag. And even if you've bought other flavors, so like if you are using a particular sausage brand mm -hmm. or you know, you're getting a tuna fish pouch that's got like a flavor added to it, make sure every single time you have a new flavor that you're trying, that you're checking it because we found a lot of variation in just different flavors. Yeah. Okay, next one is from Diane. Hey, Diane. She says, so this is weird. I've always heard you need fat to feel satiated. I have upped my protein and lowered my fat over the last few days, and I feel fuller quicker and don't get hungry as quickly eating lower fat. Is that normal? Am I just weird? No. No, it's actually, um, it's very common. Protein does fill you up faster. We're finding the same thing. Fat will usually help you get to the next meal. When you get started on keto, it's important to eat a lot of fat because it makes getting started on keto less miserable. Right. Once you, and it helps you get fat adapted quicker. We talked with, with Matt about that. But once you get fat adapted, you can start cutting back on that fat and start working on your body fat like yeah. these, right? But, you know, protein is definitely going to fill you up. Now, there are people who are different. There are people who fat fills them up more. There are people who carbohydrates fill them up more. I mean, generally, that's not the case, but everybody's body is different. That's why you have so much bioindividuality. Right. Okay, next one is from Gabriella. Hey, Gabriella. Gabriella says, does keto help depression or hurt it? I've heard conflicting things. One side always says it lowers inflammation, but I've also heard it lowers serotonin levels. Sometimes I feel like I'm better, but then I get in moods where I'm super agitated, not cycle related help. Well, Gabriella, for me, it has absolutely alleviated a lot of issues dealing with depression. And like, anxiety. And anxiety, uh, OCD, all of those things that used to flare up constantly um, are just dealt with, have just been dealt with. I feel really good. But I do think that it has been 
a gradual process. So, you know, just give it time. Right. And also I would advise um, incorporating movement and getting outdoors because mm -hmm. I think both of those things have also contributed to being a blessing for me, like getting out there and walking, getting a lot of extra oxygen, getting some sunshine, all of those things I think have added to, you know, all of my depression leaving. Yeah. Now one thing, again, we're not doctors or health professionals or nurses or anything like that. Just us personally. My suggestion is ask around in the community. I know that people responded to you on Facebook and this is for anybody with this kind of stuff. And then when you read things like studies, take a look at the study, right? Okay? Because a lot of these studies are funded by other things. Like yeah. for example, there are studies from the 50s and 60s with regards to fat or sugar. And it turned out they were funded by the sugar industry right. or by Coca-Cola. And wow, what a surprise, the study said, Fat bad, sugar good. Exactly. Well, what's the motivation? I would hope so. If, the, if if I'm a sugar company and I am paying you to do a study, I hope your conclusion <laughs> is that sugar is good and fat is bad. Right. So, so you have to kind of dive back in. Dr. Barry talks about it all the time. Like, really look at the studies. People say studies show. Well, who's making the study? Who's is it a for credible it? study? You know, so you have to like look at all that stuff. Somebody just recently sent me a message saying, ask about avocado oil because they said, well, avocado oil, not all of them are really avocado oil. It doesn't surprise me at all that there are companies putting fake stuff in the bottle. So sad. But the one story was some company I've never heard of from a year ago, and I've never seen anything about it since. So that you have to kind of look at. Now, again, I'm not saying that all avocado oil is perfect, but you also have to look at who is saying it, right? So that's just something to think about the same thing when it comes to these studies. Well, I've seen conflicting reports. How does it make you feel and how does it make other people that you know are eat who are eating this same lifestyle feel? And then go from there. Yeah. Uh, next one is from Callie. Hey, Callie. Callie says, I have to say my favorite segment of your YouTube channel is so easy. Even Rachel can make Thanks, it. Thanks, Callie. <laughs> oh my gosh, I'm so excited. Thank you. Yeah, we'll continue that. Okay, next one is from Christopher. Hey, Christopher. He says, I know a lot of people have been asking how to get a lot of protein without fat lately and don't want fish. Here you go. Just have a dozen frog legs. You're hey, welcome. Take a look at this. 12 uh, frog legs. Oh, no. Is 96% protein uh, at 59 grams of protein uh, and just one gram of fat. No. I told you no. somebody had a perfect way oh, to get everything. Wow, in. is that it? And I am absolutely buying frog legs. We are, and, and now the, here's the problem with the frog legs. Oh. There is no way for me to hide those from you. You will know they are frog legs. I am not eating that. I'm you telling will. you right you, now. What if you? What if I make them as good as our chicken wings? No, nope, I don't care. You might like. Them. I do not care. I will just. I will. No. We'll blindfold you. We're gonna nope. do a taste test. No, as soon as you put that blindfold on, I'm gonna know what you're doing. New fear factor. No. Nope. Yep. Somebody send Christopher. I need because that's the thing. Now, nope. again, we haven't had one in a while. We're gonna film one this week. But never gonna fear get factor. It, never gonna get it. Never no, gonna get that's it. Never the gonna rule. Get it. The, never gonna the get rule it. of fear never factor. If you're new to our channel, we have a series called Keto Fear Factor, where if you have a shelf stable product that is keto friendly, like mm -hmm. it can't be Kraft macaroni and cheese, right? Okay. But it could be kippers or squid. People have sent us tarantulas. You send it to us and we will eat it on Keto Fear Factor. So somebody needs to find canned frog legs. I, are, have you gotten it all out of your system now? Yes. No. <laughs> Still no. There is one more comment. It is from Wanda. Hey, Wanda. Wanda said, non-scale victory. I just got back from my doctor's appointment. And the last time I had my A1C checked, it was 9.2 with insulin. Today, it is 6.2 without, without any medications. My doctor was very happy and agreed it would have probably been lower if it had not if I had not been sick and in pain the last several months. Wow. COVID, severe knee injury, and now a bladder infection. Oh, Wanda. The doctor said once my infection is gone, my next A1C should be even lower. Yes. Stress on your body can play havoc on your glucose, especially if you're a diabetic. All of this explains why I'm having a hard time losing weight. Wow, Wanda, I am so excited for you. And you are such a blessing and encouragement to so many people out there. First of all, to just keep going mm -hmm. because you didn't 
let, you know, a season of sickness and some pain and inflammation stop you from, from what you're doing. And I'm, what a success, what a success. And man, the future is bright. Yes. I love that. Okay. Well, that is going to be this week's keto on the couch. And again, don't forget to join us on our live stream this Thursday at 8 30 PM Eastern Standard Time. Um, for all of our Patreon members, we are going to do a some kind of live event either uh, on YouTube or on Zoom this Saturday in the evening. We're excited about that. Yes. If you are interested in joining a Patreon, there is a link for that down below, but please don't feel obligated to do that. Um, and I can't wait for next week. We've got some cool things happening. We are going camping yeah. tomorrow for three days so that I can then get into the swing of lacrosse season and then we won't be camping until probably the end of April. So it's the last kind of stinks. Hoorah. I'm excited about this camping trip. Me so, too. Well, that's going to be this week's Keto on the Couch. Now, if you like seeing this video, uh, we have 101 other Keto on the Couches. And you can watch them all and all of the changes through our channel by clicking on the link right down there. Also, make sure you take a look at our most recent video, which we put right over here. But whether you head this way or you head this way, don't forget to head this way. Subscribe to our channel and click the little bell icon and that way every single time we upload a new video, you'll be alerted to it. Until next week. Bye. bye.